Hello, Mighty Companion. This is Earl Raj Purdy, and I'm here to do Hardcore Course in Miracles, a Course in Miracles here on Facebook Live. And we're going to talk about how can you get rid of the perception of one thing being more difficult than another? How can we let go of the idea that one thing is more difficult for spirit to create for us and for us to have than another? How can perception of order of difficulties be avoided? How can you let that go? We're going to talk about that in the Course in Miracles. We're going to start out with our theme song, which is We Are One by Brother John Christmas, who does music based on A Course in Miracles. And you can get this music at www.johnchristmas.com. Uh, Johnchristmas.com. So let's, so let's get into it. Welcome to Course in Miracles Hardcore here on Facebook Live. Hmm. So use this, use this to let yourself get centered and get ready to do A Course in Miracles with Earl Purdy. Yeah. There's a call for God, I see it everywhere. And everybody's running scared. Everything is turning upside down. But the words I hear, they keep coming through From deep inside of me and you It's telling us that love is who I am perception of order of difficulties be avoided. How can you let go of that idea that one thing is harder than another? How can you let go of that perception that one thing is harder than another? That's a very powerful thing to talk about. How do you let go of that perception of order of difficulties? I'm excited to hear what A Course in Miracles has to say about that. So let's get ready for it. Take a breath and get centered while this music is playing. Yeah, we're beating the same heart. 
We've been together from the start Tell me, can you hear it? Tell me, can you feel it? Took your arms around it And know that we are one Oh, oh, oh we are one yeah, yeah, we are one. Oh, oh, we are one. I am you, and you are me. Hey, I'm Earl Purdy, and I want to welcome you to Hardcore Course in Miracles. And we're going to talk about how can we get rid of the idea that one thing is more difficult than another from A Course in Miracles. How do we get rid of that idea of order of difficulties? And we're going to be in the Blue Book, the Foundation for Inner Peace version of A Course in Miracles. So good to be with you, mighty companion. And we're going to be on page 24 in the Manual for Teachers. How can perception of order of difficulties be avoided? Section 8 in the Manual for Teachers in the Course in Miracles. After doing the Course in Miracles for over 40 years, one of the, th one of the things that I try to tell people uh, who are new to it and want to start reading it, is, as odd as it may seem, I recommend starting with the Manual for Teachers. Because the Manual for Teachers uh, gives you the definitions of many of the terms in A Course in Miracles because The Course in Miracles has its own definitions of the terms that it uses. So start out with the Manual for Teachers. It will make tackling the text a lot easier. And the key to having the miracles, the expressions of love and peace that The Course in Miracles promises, is doing the workbook exercises. There are 365 lessons in A Course in Miracles, and if you really want to see the miracles and the forgiveness and the healings that A Course in Miracles promises, it's very important that you do the workbook lessons. It's the way you actually make the course work. So I can't emphasize enough. I'm the divine repetition teacher. That's what I call myself. I'm your remembering coach. So my job is not to analyze the Course in Miracles. The Course in Miracles says don't analyze it. But you do want to remember what it's saying, and you do want to apply the principles and the lessons that it's giving you, even if you don't understand it, even if you don't accept it. The, the, the rules in the Course in Miracles, it, the Course says all you need to do is remember this if you're going to study A Course in Miracles. You need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas, you may actively resist some of the ideas. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe. And some of the ideas from A Course in Miracles may startle you. Do you know that you are not being asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all? If you want to know if it's true, rather than judge in the ideas and analyzing the ideas what you want to do is use the ideas if you use the ideas the ideas will have meaning to you is because their use will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true using the ideas the course in miracles is focusing on the correction of our perception the correction of how we see things that's the most important thing that needs to be corrected in order to have peace. And do you know that the Course says, when you have peace of mind, that's when you can hear the voice of your inner guidance. Each one of us has inner guidance from the divine that the Course of Miracles calls the voice of the Holy Spirit. So our, our goal is to get to the point that we can live by direct guidance from higher power. Okay, The Course in Miracles is not a book that's 
trying to teach you how to do everything by yourself and just relying on yourself alone. It's trying to get us to the point that we will let we will let the invisible, the divine spirit operate in our life so that we can have the real happiness and joy and peace that we want. So how can perception of diff or of difficulties be avoided? So do you know the Course says, uh, what is the basis of the way the world sees things? Well, it says the basis for the world's perception is the belief in order of difficulties. Do you know that most people believe that some things are harder than other things to do? So the perception of the world, the way that we see things, the court says it rests on differences. See, what we look around us, all we see is a lot of different things. So our perception is based on the idea of differences. So our perception, the perception of the world, it rests on differences, it rests on uneven backgrounds, shifting foreground. We look at unequal heights, we look at diverse sizes, we look at various degrees of darkness and we see various degrees of light. We see a thousand, we see thousands of contrasts in which each thing seen is competing with every other thing to be recognized. So what does that mean? It means that a larger object overshadows a smaller object. It looks like something that's brighter, draws your attention to something that has less intensity of appeal. It looks like a more threatening idea or, uh, or an idea that's more desirable by the world's standards. That completely upsets the balance. So what the body's eyes perceive, what you see through your physical eyes actually is only conflict. We just see one thing competing with another thing for attention. So the cause calls that conflict. So what is it that we should remember about what we see through the physical eyes? Do not look to what your physical eyes behold for peace and understanding. What? Right. If you really want to have peace and you really want to have understanding, then you have to go beyond what your physical sight is showing you. Because when we look at things through our physical eyes, when we look at things through the body's eyes, we see lots of conflict, we see lots of challenges, we see fears, we see uh, separation. When you look through the eyes, it looks like there's so much separation going on in the world, so much conflict going on. So don't look to what you see through your body's eyes don't expect that to give you peace and understanding. So is that saying to me, is A Course in Miracles saying to me, peace and understanding is going to come from another level of consciousness other than what you see with your physical eyes? That's exactly right. You know, you, if you want peace and understanding, it's going to come from learning how to look at things other ways than looking through your physical eyes because your physical eyes see all the things that's going on in the world that could cause you some form of fear and some form of conflict. One of the things I like to do with the Course in Miracles after 40 years of working with it is to ask myself, okay, what was the point of that paragraph? Because it's remembering it that's going to give me the miracles. It's remembering it that's going to give you the healing that you're looking for. So basically, we, we heard that everything we see, the world's perception is based on differences. And that what we see through the eyes is a lot of conflict and a lot of differences in everything competing, competing for attention, competing for specialness, right? And so the main message that the Course told me was don't look to what I see through my physical eyes for peace and understanding. That if you want to have, if you want to have peace and understanding, you're going to have to look at things from a brand new level. Do you want peace? Do you want understanding? Well, let's keep going. So what are illusions? Illusions, the Course says, are false ideas. So illusions are always illusions of differences. So what is the biggest false idea? Do you want to know what it is? The biggest false idea is the idea that you and I and that everything is different. The biggest false idea is that we're different. So how could 
it be otherwise. So what is a what is a what is an illusion? So we hear that term in the Course in Miracles a lot. This is an illusion, or that is an illusion. Well, right now, the Course in Miracles is going to give you its definition of what it means when it says illusion. An illusion is an attempt to make something real. So, so an illusion is something is you are attempting to make something real that you are regarding as of major importance. So there's something that's really important to you that you're trying to make real, but you also recognize that it's untrue. So when you want something really bad, even though it's not real, then your mind tries to make it true. And it tries to make what it wants true out of its intensity of desire to have it for itself. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you're in love with somebody that is not in love with you, but you really want to believe that they love you. Well, you're going to try to make it true even though it's not true. Have you ever done that? Something you knew wasn't true, but you wanted it to be true so bad that you tried to make it real and make it true even when you knew it wasn't? Well, an illusion is, attempt to, is an attempt to make something real that you regard as of major importance, but you really know it's not true. So your mind tries to come up with ways to make it true because you have such a desire for it. So what is an illusion? Well, an illusion is a travesty of creation. Um, what is a travesty of creation? Well, it's the attempt to bring truth to lies. So an illusion is this: there's something that is not true, but I'm going to try to make it true even though it's not true. See, it's not true that we are different. It's not true that we are separate from each other. It's not true that we are sinful and guilty. It's not true that we have a creator that condemns us and punishes us. It's not true that love can ever end or you can ever lose real love. There are certain things that we believe are true that the Course in Miracles says, you know what, you all, you all believe a lot of stuff that's not really true. But you want to believe it's true and you want to make it true. And so an illusion is something that you want to make true even though you know it's not true. And so you try to make it true even though it's not. So what does that mean? See, with the Course in Miracles, you can always go, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, that means that there's a part of you that can find the truth unacceptable. Has there been some things about the truth that you haven't wanted to accept? I mean, sometimes when you study the Course in Miracles, is there some things in the Course in Miracles that you don't want to accept? Well, the Course says whenever someone tells you something or you receive a truth, and then you find that truth unacceptable, then the Course says then your mind revolts against that truth, and then your mind wants to give itself an illusion of victory. What do you mean? Just keep reading, keep reading. In other words, finding health a burden, then the mind retreats into feverish dreams. And when you are in a feverish dream, what happens? When you are having a dream, when you're believing something that is not true, then you have a dream. As soon as you lose sight of the fact that you are a spiritual being and you are a spiritual being having a human experience, when you believe you are a body, when you believe you are separate, then the Course in Miracles says that <clears throat> you retreat into a dream. It's like you've fallen asleep. And then when you fall asleep, he says, then you have this dream. And in this dream, the mind is separate. When you're having a dream, you would think your mind is separate from everybody else's mind. When you're in a dream and you're not in reality, you will believe that you have a mind that's different from other minds. In other words, you will believe your mind is different from my mind and that you have a separate mind. When you're having a dream, when you're perceiving something that's not true, you will believe that your mind is different from other minds and that other minds have interests that are different from your mind. And when you're having a dream, when you've forgotten the truth, when you're focusing in on an illusion, the court says then you become a person that tries to gratify your needs at the expense of somebody else's needs. 
So is the Course in Miracles saying that we don't know it, but we really are asleep having a dream that we're separate from each other because we don't want to accept the truth that we are one and that we're spirit and that we're only love and that we're not separated from each other or separated from God. We're not, we're not really different from each other. We're all creating and perceiving according to our beliefs. Everybody is just responding to their own beliefs and their own interpretations. We're all doing the same thing. So the Course in Miracles says it's an illusion for you to think you're different from anybody else. We're all doing the same thing. We're acting on the beliefs and we're acting on the meanings that we've given to everything. So where do these differences come from? So if it looks like there are differences, if it looks like there are differences, where do these differences come from? Well, it says in Section 8, Paragraph 3 of the Manual for Teachers, says certainly the differences seem like they're coming from the outside world. It looks like I'm looking at an outside world and I'm seeing things that are different from me. I'm seeing people that are different from me. I'm seeing situations that are different. Well, it looks like the difference the differences are coming from the outside world. But guess what? <laughs> when you look at something, it's your mind that's judging what you're looking at. Like right now, if you're looking at me, it's your mind that's judging what you're looking at. You're looking at me, and it's your mind that's judging me. So right now, your mind, do you know, are you aware that right now, your mind, if, you, if you're still tuned in and paying attention, uh, right now, your mind is judging me and judging what I'm saying to you right now from the Course in Miracles. So that means that it is the mind, it is the mind that's interpreting what you are seeing, which is the eyes messages. So, okay, let's hear this. Let's hear this. Remember the name of the game with Hardcore Course in Miracles if we want to, we want to hear it, okay? So, number one, you want to realize that it's your mind that's judging what you're looking at. And it's your mind that's interpreting the messages that your eyes are giving you. And it is your mind that's giving everything that you're seeing the meaning that it has. You are giving, your, you are giving me the meaning that I have to you right now. You're the one that's giving what I'm saying to you right now, all the meaning that it has for you. What I'm saying doesn't mean any more to you than the meaning that you give to it. So, so when you give something a meaning, that meaning doesn't exist in the outside world. When you interpret something, that interpretation is happening in your mind. The meaning that you're giving me is happening in your mind. So the meanings in the world don't really exist in the world. All the meanings in your life are coming from you, and everything that has meaning in your life is coming from your mind. I don't have any more meaning to you than the meaning you give me. Your child, your friends, your co-workers, everybody in your world, everything in your world doesn't have any more meaning to you than the meaning that you are giving it. So everything you see, you're the one that's giving it the meaning. So the meaning doesn't really exist in the outside world. The meaning of everything exists inside your mind. And it's the meaning that you're giving everything that's determining how you feel. Your feelings are coming from the meanings that you're giving to everything. Your, your feelings about that relationship is coming from the meanings that you're giving to that relationship. The feelings you have about your financial situation is coming from the meaning that you're giving to your financial situation. The meaning that you give, you are the one that's giving everything the meaning that it has. And then it's the meaning that it has that's creating the feelings that you have. So your feelings are feeling great or your feelings of feeling sad, where are those feelings coming from? They're coming from you. Those feelings are coming from the meanings you are giving to everything. Then the Course in Miracles says, and this meaning does not exist in the world outside at all. So what is seen as reality? What is it that you see as reality? Well, what you see as reality is simply whatever your mind prefers. Whatever your mind prefers is what you believe is true. Whatever your mind prefers is what you believe is reality. So you have a hierarchy of values. What does it mean to have a hierarchy of values? 
uh, it means that you see some things as being more important to you than other things. There are some things that you value more than other things. There are some people that you value more than other people. There are some circumstances that you value more than other circumstances. So, there, so therefore, the, the, the values that you have determine what's important in terms of what you're looking at. If I'm looking at my child, then my child is probably going to have more value and importance to me than if I'm looking at somebody else's child. So there is a hierarchy of values. There are some things you value more than other things. And what happens when you have these values? Then you project your values outward. So we project the things that we value outward and then we see it. So you are seeing what you value. What you are perceiving in your experience, it's what you value. So the once you value something, the once you give something a meaning, then you send your body's eyes to find it. If I'm looking for people to like me, then I'm going to, if I want people to like me, then I'm looking for the people who are smiling at me and tend to treat me really good. Then those are the people that my eyes are looking for. Your eyes are always looking for what you believe is important and what you value. If you value negative things and negative thoughts, then you're going to see negative things, negative people, and negative thoughts because your eyes are going to look for the things you value and the things you focus on. That's what you're going to see. So the Course says that the body's eyes will never see except through differences. So your physical eyes will always see what looks like differences in different things all around you. So the physical eyes do not see sameness. The physical eyes do not see oneness. The physical eyes see separation. The physical eyes see separate things. I see the book, the Kindle book that I'm using for this class. I see the physical Course in Miracles book. I, I see the player that I'm using to play music. In other words, my eyes are going to always see different things. So oneness is not something you're going to see through your physical eyes. The oneness that we share, you are not going to see that through your physical eyes. As long as you're looking through your physical eyes, you're looking through your body's eyes, you're going to see different and separate things. The body's eyes will never see, will never see, except through differences. You're going to see only differences through your body's eyes. You're going to see me as different from you. So it's not what you see on the outside that makes your perception. It's not the messages and the perceptions that your physical eyes bring. That's not where your perception is really based and resting on. Only the mind. It is your mind. Do you know that it is your mind that is evaluating the messages that your physical eyes show you? So every time I see something, I evaluate it. Every time you see something with your physical eyes, you interpret it, you give it meaning, and you evaluate it. And when you look at something, there aren't but two evaluations. Do you know there are not but two evaluations? You're either going to see things in such a way, and you're going to give it a meaning that gives you peace, or you're going to see things with your physical eyes, and you're going to use what you're seeing to give yourself some form of fear or conflict. So your mind is evaluating everything you see. You are evaluating everything you see. So that means that your mind, what is your mind responsible for? Your mind is responsible for seeing. You are seeing in your mind everything that you see is in your mind. Every single thing that you perceive, you are perceiving it in your mind. Your mind. Your mind is responsible for what you see. 
Your mind is responsible for how you see. And the way you see things determine how you feel. So if you ever want to be happy, all you have to do to be happy is learn new interpretations of what you see and learn how to give what you see and feel new meanings. Because the meanings of things, that meaning is not coming from something outside of you. The meaning that you give things, where is it coming from? It's coming from your mind. So your mind is responsible for seeing. Your mind is responsible for what you see. Your mind is responsible for what you see. Your mind is responsible for what you feel. Your mind is responsible for what you see. Your mind is responsible for what you're feeling right now. Your mind is responsible for what you are feeling right now. Your man is responsible. Your man is responsible for seeing. The man is responsible for seeing. It's your man that's deciding whether what you see is real or what you see is illusory. It's your man that's deciding whether or not what you see is true or what you see is false. It's you that's deciding whether or not what I'm saying to you is true or whether what or rather or whether what I'm saying to you is false. It's your mind that's always evaluating everything you see and feel. And your feelings are coming from the evaluations and the meanings that you're giving to things. That's what's causing how you feel. Not the external thing, but the meaning that you're giving. So it's your mind that decides what's real and what's not. It's your mind that decides what's desirable and what's not desirable. It's you you the one that says, I desire to have that person, but I don't desire to have that person. Oh, I desire to have that job, but I don't desire to have that job. I desire to have that coat, but I don't want that coat over there. It is your mind alone that is deciding what is real and what is not. It is your mind that's deciding what's desirable for you and what's not desirable for you. Do you realize it is your mind that is deciding what's pleasurable or what's painful? So what are you trying to say to me, Course in Miracles? Well, I'm trying to tell you that it's in the sorting out and categorizing activities. What kind of activities do you have in your mind? Your mind is constantly sorting things out and categorizing things. Your mind is constantly sorting and categorizing. I'm categorizing this as a good person and I'm categorizing this person over here as a bad person. I'm categorizing this race as being a good race, but I'm categorizing this race over here as not being so good. I'm always categorizing and sorting out. That's what everybody's mind is doing. Everybody around you, what are they doing? Where their mind is responsible for how they're seeing things. They're the ones that's giving all the meaning to everything that they see. Their feelings and emotions uh, their feelings and emotions are coming from the evaluations and meanings that they're giving to everything and everybody. It is your mind. It is the mind that decides whether something is desirable or something is undesirable. It is your mind. It is you that's determining whether something is pleasurable to you or something painful is it's painful to you. So it is your categorizing and your sorting out. That's where the mistakes in perception enter okay so how does wrong perception enter how does a misperception enter what makes me see something in the wrong in the wrong way what makes a person see something in an incorrect way well however that person has sorted that situation whatever meaning that person has given to that situation whatever character categorizing that that person is doing they're doing it wrong. They're sorting it out the wrong way. They're giving it the wrong meaning. He says that's where errors in perception comes from. The errors and mistakes in how a person sees things is coming from that person's own evaluations and judgments. So it's, since it's in the categorizing, uh, sorting out activity of your mind that's causing you to feel whatever you're feeling right now, then if you're seeing something in such a way that is giving you pain or conflict, then it's in the mind that the correction must be made. If you ever want to be happy, 
then your th your thinking has to be corrected. When if you really want to experience real joy, then you are making and you are not experiencing real joy. Then according to a course in miracles, it's because the way you are categorizing things, the way you are judging things, the way you are sorting things out, the meanings and interpretations that you are giving yourself, they are incorrect. So it's in the sorting out, the judging, and the categorizing, that's where the mistakes enter. So in the mind is where correction must be made. Correction must be made in the mind, in the mind, in your thinking, in your thinking, in the meaning that you give things. Where you make mistakes, you make mistakes in your judgments. Mistakes are made through making wrong judgments, wrong interpretations. So let's get clearer about how this works. So where, so where does the correction need to be made? Where does the healing need to happen? The healing needs to happen in the mind. All the healing that you're looking for, everything that you want to have, is going to come from having correct thoughts in your mind because everything that you see is coming from your mind. It's a projection of your own thought. Everything you experience, everything you see is coming from you. Everything you see is coming from your mind and the way your mind is judging things and the values that you're giving things, that's what's determining what you see and what you focus on. So if correction is going to be made, where does correction need to be made? Correction need to be, needs to be made in the mind. Mm. So, that's, so then if you're reading along with me, the next sentence says in paragraph 4, section 8 in the Manual for Teachers, it says, the mind classifies. So what does your mind do? Your mind is classifying what the body's eyes bring to it. So your mind is classifying everything you see. Your mind is classifying everything you see according to your preconceived values. So if you if you value, let's say if you value someone not drinking, then you are going to classify that person according to how you feel about drinking. See, we classify everything according to what we value. So that means that we're the one that judges where each sense datum fits best. So if you're the one judging what's true and what's false based on your past learnings and your beliefs and your values, what basis could be faultier than, than this? What what could it's how would you like to be truly judged by everybody else's opinion of you and what they believe and what they think about you? Because everybody is giving you meaning and they're sorting out and they're categorizing and they're they're having their opinions and their beliefs about you. And so that's coming from their values. So what could be more faulty than judging everybody about what you believe is true? And then, and what by what you value, and so that's going to be the value and the criteria for everybody else. What well, the course is saying, what basis could be faultier than this? So, unrecognized by itself, your mind is asked to be given what will fit into these categories. So, you're looking for what fits in with your values, your meanings, your judgments, your category, your categorizing, and so you are the one that concludes what is true for you and what's not true for you. You are the one that comes up with what's valuable to you and what's not valuable to you. And you judge everything you see based on your value system. A person judges everything they see based on their value system. But suppose your value system is wrong. Suppose your value system is not based on the truth and it's not based on love and it's not based on oneness. Suppose you have a value, suppose a person has a value system that's frankly all screwed up. Well, then their judgments on everything and everyone is not going to be correct. That's what everybody does. What the Course in Miracles is described right now, everyone is listening or watching 
you are doing this. You know you're doing it. You know you're judging what you look at. You know you look at things according to what you value. And then there's a tendency to want everybody to value what we value and do it the way we would do it. And so the Course in Miracles says, you're the one that concludes what categories must be true for you. So that's the judgment. On this, the judgment of all differences rest. Because it is this, everything that I've just told you, that the judgments of the world depend on. What do the judgments of the world depend on? The judges, the judgments of the world depend on the values and the categorizing and the meanings that we are all giving to everything. And we're all reacting to the meanings and the beliefs and the values that we give everything. And those beliefs and those values determine how you feel. So the way that you feel, it's not coming from that person or that situation or that circumstance. The way you feel is coming from the way your mind judges what you are seeing. And so the Course in Miracles says, can this confused and senseless reasoning be depended on for anything? This is the Course of Miracles says you all have confused and senseless reasoning. You all use reasoning that doesn't make any sense because your reasoning is based on the idea that everyone is separate from each other and different from each other. And he says that's a confused and senseless reasoning. We are one. We are joined. We are connected. And until we realize that we are one and that we are joined and that we are connected, then the way that we see things and the values that we have are going to cause us pain because they're not based on the truth. But there's a part of me that wants to believe that I'm separate. There's a part of me that wants to believe I'm not connected to you. And so, I, and so I'm seeking ways to make sure that I prove that to myself that I'm different. There can be no order of difficulties in healing. It is not harder for spirit to heal one situation than another. It is not harder for spirit to heal one disease than another. There is, not, there is no order of difficulty in healing because every sickness is an illusion. Every sickness is not ultimately real. Now, do we perceive it as real? Of course we can perceive sickness as real, but that doesn't mean that it's real. So what we need to understand is that if whatever the sickness is, whatever the problem is, if it's not ultimately real, then there is no difficulty in solving one problem than another problem for spirit. There is no difficulty in solving one sickness over another sickness. That's the truth. But we don't necessarily believe that. And so we don't necessarily see the truth of that. Think of it this way. The Course in Miracles is just telling us the way that it really is, whether we believe it or not. Whether, you know, whether we believe it or not, it isn't harder for one sickness or one problem to be healed than another sickness or problem to be healed. If we follow the instructions of spirit, if we follow the instructions of the Holy Spirit, if we follow, if we follow the truth, if we practice the truth, then there is no such thing as one situation being harder to deal with than another situation. Let me give you an example. Is it harder to dispel the belief of the insane in a larger hallucination as opposed to a smaller hallucination? Um, would a person agree more quickly to the unreality of a louder voice that they're listening to or uh, to that of a softer voice, softer voice that they're listening to? Would a person dismiss more easily a whispered demand to kill than a shout that you should kill? Do the number of pitchforks the devil carry uh, affect their credibility in your perception? In other words, if, the, if Bugs Bunny is not real, would a hundred Bugs Bunnies be real? No. It wouldn't make any difference. One Bugs Bunny is not any more real than a thousand Bugs Bunnies. So the Course in Miracles says just because something is more intense doesn't mean that it's necessarily more true. So because it looks like cancer is much more serious than getting a common cold, that doesn't necessarily mean that cancer would be harder to cure than the common cold because both of them ultimately are not 
real. They're not permanent. They're not coming from God. It's not coming from love. And only what comes from love lasts. Only what comes from love is permanent. And so sickness doesn't come from love. Anger doesn't come from love. Uh, lack doesn't come from love. Attack doesn't come from love. So anything that doesn't come from reality, which is love, then that thing by definition will not last. There is no such thing as an eternal war and eternal sickness. There is nothing that is not love that will last forever. And what is real is what lasts forever. What's real is eternal. What's real cannot be destroyed. And the Course is trying to teach us the difference between what's real and what's not real. So, but if your mind categorizes everything that you see or something as being real, if you really believe something is real, if you really believe something is true, even if it's not true, if, but if you want to believe, in other words, let's say you want to believe I don't like you, then no matter how loving I am to you, you won't see it because you want to be right about the fact that you don't like me and that I'm not someone that's a nice person. So the truth is, it's then me not being a nice person, that's going to be real to you because that's what you want to believe. So the Course in Miracles says your mind categorizes everything that you see and then the, once you see it as real and the once you see something is true, it's real and true for you. If I believe that all women are going to hurt me, then no matter how many nice, beautiful women that I meet, I am going to believe that they're going to hurt me. And I'm probably going to pick out the very one that will hurt me because I'm looking for the woman who hurts me because that would validate my belief that women hurt me. So whatever you focus on, whatever you believe is real, whatever you believe is true, that's what you're going to see. That's what you're going to experience. So when would the sickness disappear? When would the illusion disappear? When would the thing that's not true disappear? When is the pain, the suffering, when is it going to disappear? Well, when you realize that it is an illusion when you realize that it's not true, that it's not based in love, that it's not reality as God created reality, then the problem, the sickness, the illusion will disappear. Like, how can I get rid of this thing that's bothering me? Well, it's going to disappear as soon as I realize that it's not true, as soon as I realize that it's not real. And by real, what do we mean when we say real? The Course in Miracles defines something that is real as something that is eternal, something that is permanent, and something that is consistent, and you can always depend on it. So anything that changes, anything that is temporary, by definition, from the Course in Miracles, that would be something that is not ultimately real, because what's real, you can always depend on, and what is real will always be there. What can change was never love. That love that you said, that a person says is the ultimate love of their life, but that love is gone and they don't have that love anymore. It wasn't love in the first place. You can't lose real love. Real love never changes and real love never attacks. Real love never hurts. Real love never judges. Real love never condemns. You can't lose real love. You can lose specialness. Specialness is attention that you get from somebody as long as you do what they want you to do the way they want you to do it. And then the minute you don't do it the way they want, then they withdraw their quote unquote love, but it's really just specialness that they are withdrawing. It's not true love. True love is inclusive of all and true love uh, never attacks and it never hurts. Okay, you can't be hurt by love. You can be hurt by fear. You can be hurt by lack of love in your perception. But love would never hurt you. 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 Love will never hurt you. Real love will never hurt you. Real love, you cannot lose real love. You cannot lose real love. If it's real love, you cannot lose it. So the properties of illusion that make them different are really irrelevant. Because the properties 
is of an illusion is just as illusory as they are. Bugs Bunny's arm is just as unreal as the rest of Bugs Bunny's body. So no, it doesn't matter what kind of illusion that you have. It doesn't matter what kind of false idea that you have. What's important is to recognize a false idea as a false idea. What's important is to recognize an illusion as an illusion. So the course is teaching you how to tell the difference between when you're dealing with something that's real, something that's good, something that's love, something that you can depend on, and when you, or when you're fooling yourself again and you're getting ready to hurt yourself again by believing in something that's not true and trying to make it true just because you really want it. So it's so so face the reality that only love is real and anything that is not love anything that is not love is not reality now can you experience it can it seem like you experiencing something other than love of course you can why because if it's what you value if it's what you believe if it's what you focus on then you're going to see it and you're going to react to it according to the values you have given it you are reacting to me no more or no less than the value you give me and what I'm saying. So you're the one that's giving meaning to every single thing that I'm saying to you. And that's based on your beliefs. And that's what's determining how you feel about what I'm saying. So as long as you're in the body, what's going to happen? As long as you think you're in the human body, what's going to happen? Well, the body's eyes will continue to see differences. You're going to continue to see what it looks like separation and, it's going to, and what it looks like differences. Um, but if your mind has been healed, what's going to happen if you have a healed mind? If you have a healed mind, uh, then your mind will no longer acknowledge differences. I know it looks like you and me are different. But I know we are not. I know we are one self joined with our creator. I know that it just appears like we are different from each other. I'm learning that uh, we are not, that we are one being, that there is just one of us here, that we are all connected. Even though it looks like there are different people, there aren't. There's just the one in many different forms, in many different bodies. So when your mind is healed, you will see the differences. You will see the fear. You will see the guilt. You will see the wealth and you will see the poverty. You will see everything you're seeing right now. It'll look like some people are sicker than other people. And when you look at different people, it'll look like some people are happier than other people. But when your mind is healed, what's going to happen when your mind is healed? When your mind is healed, even though you are looking at what looks like all the differences in the world, when your mind is healed, you're going to put everything that you see in one category, that any of the differences that you see are unreal, that there's nothing that you're looking at that cannot be corrected, that cannot be healed by Holy Spirit, by the truth, by love. Love, God, Spirit can heal everything so for the creator it is not more difficult to cure a cold or the perception of a cold or, or the perception of cancer because both of them are not real because god did not create either one of them those things are coming from fearful thoughts that are based on separation it's not it's not important that you necessarily understand or agree with anything that I'm saying. Remember that I've already said you don't have to believe it, you don't have to accept it, you don't have to welcome it, and that some of it you might resist and find hard to believe. We've already covered that from the course. So it isn't about you necessarily understanding what I'm saying or liking what I'm saying. What the course is doing is saying, let me just tell you the truth about it. Let me tell you the truth about it. You're going to continue to see differences even though you're studying the truth and studying the Course in Miracles. Uh, there are going to be some people that seem happier or sicker than others and others that seem healthier or happier than others. And then your eyes are going to show you those changed appearances. But when you are healed and your mind is healed, you're going to put all of that in one category. You're going to see it as the sickness, the pain and suffering is ultimately unreal. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the gift of your divine teacher. So what is the gift of the Holy Spirit? What is the gift of your divine teacher? Well, the understanding of something that's very simple. Let me tell you, this, let's reduce this to something very simple. The Course in Miracles says you need to understand 
that there are only two categories that mean anything in sorting out the perceptions and messages that your mind is receiving from what appears to be the outside world. You, you're getting perceptions, you're getting messages from the outside world, right? You're always looking out and you're seeing things in the outside world. Well, there are just two categories that you should put everything you see in two categories. You should put everything you see into two categories. And of the two categories, only one category is true. Only one category is real. You are to put everything that you see into two categories, but only one of the categories is really, truly real, true, and valid. Okay? Everything I see is going to fall in two categories, but it's only one of those categories that's real. So how do I tell which, what I, if what I'm looking at is real? So what does reality look like? What does the truth look like? Well, the Course says reality is real. So that means reality is something that goes beyond size. Reality goes beyond shape. Reality goes beyond time and place. Reality is something that goes beyond the differences that we see. Differences can't exist in love. Differences cannot exist in reality. In reality, we are all one. In reality, we are all joined. Do we see differences? Yeah, we see differences because the body's eyes were made to see differences. And that's why we see differences. There's a part of us that wants to see separation. There's a part of us that wants to see differences. But the differences, the Course in Miracles is saying, the differences are not true. We are one. We are all love. We are all choosing and, and choosing what we see and how we see. We're all connected to source. We're all innocent but we all have perceptions and we see what's based on our own beliefs and the meanings that we give things. So what is the one answer to sickness? What is the one answer to any problem that you have? Um, the one answer to sickness is, in, is, is healing. If you got a problem, the one answer to it is it needs to be healed and it can be healed by source. Source can heal whatever it is that you're misperceiving. It can heal any form of sickness, any form of problem. Uh, illusions are not really different. Every illusion, every false idea we have can be corrected. Any fear, any anger, any guilt, uh, any lack that we experience on any level can be healed. The one answer to all of our illusions, to all of our false ideas, the one answer to every problem or sickness that we think we have, the one answer to that, the thing that will heal that is the truth. So the more you learn the truth, the more you read the truth, the more you focus on the truth. And in this case, we're talking about the Course in Miracles, even though the truth comes to us in many different ways. I'm especially talking to people who have chosen a Course in Miracles as their spiritual path. Then the one answer to all your problems is the truth and that means for you course in miracle students that the one answer to your problem your, any problem that you have is to master and remember and apply the teachings from the course in other words to remember everything i said in this section that i covered so how would you remember it so that you could have the miracle you have to read it and listen to it and watch it over and over again until you can remember that you're always just seeing what you value, and you're the one that's sorting out, categorizing, and giving meaning to everything you see. And that meaning that you're giving is what's causing the way that you're feeling. So if you're feeling anger, guilt, grievances, unhappiness, and upset, it's because those are the meanings, those are the interpretations that you're giving to the things that you see. And the Course in Miracles teaches you and gives you new meanings and new interpretations to use when you are trying to give meaning to what you are seeing. And it's all in the material. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to figure it out. It's not about how smart you are and your ability to come up with all the answers on your own. It's about, will I open myself up to this new way of looking at things that I've just heard? Will I start to move in the direction of understanding that what's hurting my feelings or making me feel good 
that's being determined by the meaning that I'm giving to everything I see. But when my mind is healed, then I'm going to place everything in one or two categories. It's either love or it's fear. I'm going to place everything in two categories. It's either real or it's unreal. And only love is real. Only love is true. Only freedom is true. Only peace is true. Because those are the things that can last forever and permanently when you get your perception corrected. So I'm going to do a quick little recap of what I've said. I'm Earl Purdy. I'm a full-time teacher of A Course in Miracles. If you'd like to make a donation, a financial expression of appreciation, then go to my website, www.earlpurdy.com. Earl Purdy, P-U-R-D-Y. Also, you can use Venmo. You can use the Cash App. You can use PayPal. You can use Zelle. All you need is my email address. And my email address is earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. Earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. I also do one-on-one -on -one personal sessions where I bring my 40 years of working with New Thought and the Course in Miracles into the situation that you would like to have healed or to see another way. They're called clarity sessions. If you go to my website, you look under the clarity session tab and it explains my services in detail and then you can self book uh, a session with me right from my website on sundays at 1 p.m mountain time 1 p.m mountain time on the earl purdy page on facebook i do another course in miracles class but i also do it at a place where people can come in person if they live in the denver colorado area so you can join me in person at 1 p.m on sundays mountain time here in Denver at 1555 Race, R-A-C-E, Race Street, here in Denver, Colorado, 80206. So if you're in the Denver area, come on, join me in person. But i also be doing it on Facebook Live so you can still watch online. 1 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time <clears throat> uh, on Facebook Live. You can watch and attend. I'm also a professional astrologer and numerologist, and I've been doing it for over 40 years. If you're interested in having a session with me of that nature, I'm also available, and you can self-book that online also. Thursdays, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. That's We do Hardcore Course in Miracles on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. I got hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube, on my website, and on Facebook. I'm here to be truly helpful. I try to share everything as best I can to benefit you, my brothers and sisters, because it's time for us to move toward the truth. It's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to remember who we truly, truly, truly for real are. Okay, so here we go. Take, Give me a minute. And this is what I want you to listen to for one minute because it kind of sums up everything. And, and read this and watch this at least four times. I give everything I see all the meaning that it has for me. I give everything I see all the meaning that it has for me. You give everything you see all the meaning that it has for you. So why is it that one thing isn't more difficult than another? It's very simple. You can apply a correct perception to every single thing in your life. You can look at everything that causes you any kind of pain another way. And if you can look at everything another way, then there's no order of difficulty because you can apply correct perception, loving perception, peaceful perception to whatever you're looking at. And you have a teacher. You have a teacher. There is nothing that the Course in Miracles is telling you to do that you need to do by yourself on your own. You have this material. You have this course. 
and it will give you exactly how to change your mind to the point that you see no order of difficulty in miracles. So when you recognize that you are the meaning maker, then you have found the secret to happiness. If it's my meanings and the interpretations that I'm giving something that's determining how I feel, then I just need to give everything a new meaning, a meaning that will give me joy, a meaning that will give me happiness, a meaning that will give me peace. And the Course in Miracles is full of new interpretations and new meanings that you can use to give yourself peace and to give yourself love. And when you look at things in the correct way, in the new way that the Course in Miracles is giving, then you have inner peace. And do you know that when you have inner peace, you can hear the voice of God in you. You can hear the voice of guidance that will tell you how to deal with every single situation and circumstance in your life. Mighty companion, you are completely, completely a blessing to me because you're helping me remember the truth and I hope I'm helping you remember the truth. Please share this video. Please share this video. And guess what? Listen to it or watch it at least four times. Repetition, remember. Re re repeat, remember. Repeat, remember. That's the way you allow the Course in Miracles to work. It's through remembering, repeating these ideas. Mighty Companion, may the Course... May the course be with you. I appreciate you so much.